Ladies and gentlemen, this is Chad Perkins for Red Giant, and it is my privilege to give you an intro here into Trap Code DAO, an amazing and versatile new plugin for Adobe After Effects that allows you to generate 3D geometry along a path. In this tutorial, we're going to look at the basics of DAO, and we're also going to dig into the types of paths that you can create and, you know, some tips and tricks along the way. Know that this is only the first in a series of tutorials on DAO, so be sure to check the others as well as the DAO documentation for the whole story. Now let's just start fresh here. I'm going to go ahead and create a new solid, I'll call it DAO just for clarity's sake. And then I'm going to go over here to the effects and presets panel. You could also go up to the effect menu at the top of the screen. I'm going to go to the trap code subcategory and there we'll find DAO, T-A-O. I'm going to go ahead and apply this to my solid. And there it is. Now, again, what DAO is doing, it's generating 3D geometry along a path. DAO gives you three options to create paths. You can have a path automatically generated. You could use a motion path from a light. We'll talk about each of these in a, in a second here. And you can also generate paths from masks. Let's open up the path generator section and talk about this. By default, the default shape here is circle. We have three to choose from. We'll come back to that in a second. We have some basic parameters like size, center, and rotation for this path. Again, this is 3D, so we can rotate this along the y-axis. And I could also go here to taper size. I could taper this, it will taper the edges. So now we have this kind of cool 3D crescent. But the magic here, and the real important stuff to get is not just the paths and the control over the paths, but also of the 3D objects that are along the path. So we adjust those in the segment menu, right below the three path options here. And one of the most critical settings here is this segment mode dropdown. By default, it's set to extrude endgon. What that does is it extrudes a single piece of geometry along the path. When it's set to this option, the segments menu controls the segments of the path. So if we take this down to something very small, we get something very low poly, like a uh, 80s video game or something. Setting this very high adds a lot more smoothness to our geometry. Now I'll take this back down to something like, I don't know, six or something small. Another option we have instead of extrude endgon is to repeat endgon. This kind of puts a break in the path and just uses these different chunks of geometry. And we can control the chunks with the segments parameter now. So with when it's set to extrude, segments controls the path. And then now under repeat, it controls the pieces of geometry. So as we increase this, we now have separate pieces of geometry, which gives us a very different look. Again, here's extrude and here's repeat. Another repeat option, instead of just repeating n-gons, we can repeat spheres along this as well. And they don't look too much like spheres because there's not too many sides. So as we increase the sides, it actually increases like the resolution of the geometry and those get smoothed out nicely. Now you notice how fast this is rendering. That's one of my favorite parts about DAOs. You could really just get in here and play with 3D and it, everything just renders really quickly. Now down here, we notice we have a size parameter. And we also saw a size parameter in our path generator group here. But the size here refers to the size of the path. The size in the segment group refers to the size of each segment, the X, Y, Z. So as I increase this, the path isn't getting bigger, the segments are getting bigger. We also have access to segment scale on each individual axis. We could scale that down a little bit. We could also rotate these on different directions, which is interesting. And again, if we take this back to repeat n-gon, we're going to get different results. And extrude n-gon is going to give us even different results than that. Now, I take this to repeat n-gon, and I'm going to go to this size z. As I play with this value, you know, it doesn't seem like... Yeah, I was really doing that much. It doesn't seem like that's necessarily what I want. But as I increase this value, this is the fun part about DAO, is you start taking things to ridiculous levels, and we get these really beautiful geometric shapes. Now, remember, folks, this is full 3D. So I could actually come in here and I could create a new After Effects light, make a point light about the same color of the uh, background here, and click OK. And there's our After Effects light. And maybe tone that down a little bit. We could move this around our scene. And you could see that light changing this here. Ah, oh, spectacular. And also, again, we can create a camera and move this camera through our scene as well. Again, totally 3D. I could zoom in here, play with this. Ah, oh, it's spectacular. 
Now I'm going to undo this a bunch of times. Another way that I like to play with segments along a path is to adjust the twist Z. So as we adjust twist Z, these shapes rotate in the most beautiful of ways. <laughs> so great. And again, we everything just changes when you just play with one parameter here. So if I go to segments and I increase the number of segments, that completely changes that look. Or if we change this to extrude, or if we change this to repeat sphere. I mean, the possibilities are endless, but keep in mind, folks, we've only talked about the first type of path. We've only created a circle, which is pretty remarkable. I'm going to go ahead and reset this entire effect by clicking the reset button at the top of the effect controls panel. Just get back to square one here. We talked about the circle. There's also a line that you can use. And if we go into the segment menu and now twist Z, we see we have a completely different effect there. This kind of faceted, low poly, twisty thing, which is gorgeous in its own way. If we increase the segments, it's like we increase the resolution. And now we have this like piece of licorice. And we've chamfered the edges here. So I could go to chamfer size and I can increase the chamfer size, lower the chamfer size, making these beautiful like 3D ribbons. Now I'm just going to go ahead and reset the effect one more time. And the third shape that is generated for you automatically is the fractal. So basically it just creates kind of like a fractal shape and extrudes the geometry around that. In order to be able to see this better, I'm going to increase fractal length so we have a little bit longer of a fractal. And I'm also going to increase the segment so we have a little bit more resolution, a little bit more detail. And to add maximum sexiness here, I'm going to go ahead and check taper size. Now we have tapered edges on this fractal path. We could adjust the start and end values. Ooh, so nice. And again, folks, this is rendering so fast. It's real time with all this geometry we have going on here. Now that's the basics of this path generator section, these paths that are generated automatically for you. Let's look at how to create our own custom paths using lights and masks. Now, I have here this shape that I've already created, uh, this circle, you know, automatically generated. But I've also created a light with a motion path. So if we you know, move this over time, we could see that it's in the shape of an R. Well, the magic of this is that Dow can use this motion path from this light to create geometry, to extrude geometry around this path. The way that we set this up is by changing the name of the light. So we just have to call it Dow, capital T, capital A, capital O. And it, that just has to be the, a prefix. So we could name, you know, I just put a bunch of nonsense letters afterwards, it doesn't matter. And then it uses that motion path as long as the prefix, the first three letters are capital T A O. Now you're noticing that we have this circle and this motion path on at the same time. So what we have to do is go back to DAO, open up the path generator, which again is on by default, and deselect generate path. So we're only looking at the path from our lights. Now this is a motion path. So inherently there is animation here. We can even see this light going around our R, but our R is just existing. It doesn't animate at all. What we can do is go into paths from DAO lights and we can change the Dow lights mode from entire path, which draws on the entire motion path at once, change this to build up. And then our path animates on over time. It builds up. Woo. Now, as we've already learned, tapering is very attractive. So what I can do is I can enable size from radius to use the radius of the light to create tapering. So in another example here, I've animated the radius of the light over time. And what's kind of cool about this is that we don't have to just taper the ends. We could taper so it's like small here, big here, small here, big here. We can adjust the tapering over time to get what we want. And I could go back to Dow here and change this from a tire path again to build up. And then we could see it build on over time. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick here when working with lights and creating motion paths from it. It's a little bit more intermediate advanced, so if you need to pause the video and rewind it, feel free to do that. Again, I'm going to go pretty quick here. I'm going to create a new null. I'm going to make it 3D. I'm going to create two new point lights. I'm just going to use the default color, default uh, intensity. doesn't really matter here, but just to be clear. And I'm also going to parent these lights to this null, and then for each light, I'm going to change the position to 100, 0, 0 for the first one and negative 100, 0, 0 for the second. So that way, what we've essentially done is created a null with two point lights equidistant along the x-axis 
uh, from the anchor point of the null. Now, what I could do is uh, drag this down. See those two little lights come along for the ride because they're attached, they're parented. And I'm going to adjust or animate the position of the null. So I'm going to hit position, go to the end of my composition, raise this around. And you know, I'm also going to animate the rotation, the Y rotation of this value. So I'll start here at the beginning and we'll do a little loop-de-loo there at the top. So now as these are going up, they also kind of spin. And Dow can use the motion path from these lights, even though they don't have any animation of their own. They're just parented to this null. So I'm going to go to Dow, and um, actually I don't need to do anything to Dow. I need to do something with my lights. So I'm going to call this one Dow, and this one, I don't know, Dow Jr. <laughs> and we see a little bit of a motion path here, but we need to adjust our segments here in Dow. So I'm going to go to the segment section, open up size, increase size. And now we have this beautiful double helix. And let's go to Dow Lights, change Dow Lights, lights mode to build up. And then as we play this back, the results that we get from using a null with lights that have been parented to it are pretty awesome. Now, before we move on from talking about paths from Dow Lights, I want to give you one other little trick here. This is pretty advanced, but I think it's really helpful. Now, what I have here in my scene is a bunch of different lights, seven lights total, and they all have a motion path, and Dow is using the uh, motion path from all these lights to create geometry. And it's a bunch of different lights, but only one instance of Dow. But because it's only one instance of Dow, it means they all share the same settings. They all have the same number of segments. They all have the same uh, segment mode. They all have all the same attributes. But you might want to customize some of the attributes in Dow. Well, you can do that by using light name modifiers. So I could actually change the name of one of these lights to have it use different settings in Dow. So I'm gonna change this Dow 3 light and I'm gonna add the suffix, a modifier, M-O-D. This will change the segment mode. Right now we have repeat spheres. And you can see it's kind of like a path that there are a bunch of squash spheres repeating on. But let's say we want to change this to extrudes. We want to extrude geometry on just this one light. I could uh, type in M-O-D colon E. That's the shortcut, the modifier, for extrude geometry. And now that geometry is extruded along the motion path instead of having spheres repeat along it. Now again, there's a whole host of modifiers you can add to your lights. You can you know, combine modifiers. There's just a lot there. So I really recommend checking out the DAO documentation for all the scoop on the modifiers that are available there. Now, let's talk about masks. I have here some geometry that I created with auto generated uh, paths from the path generator. And so if I go in and I create a mask, I'm just gonna click on the pen tool, I'll check Roto Bezier, and I click on this path, like a, a mask on this layer, it's gonna automatically apply the same settings I already had for this existing geometry to my mask. And I don't want that. So I'm gonna go to path generator again and deselect generate path so we're only seeing the path from the mask. Now, for clarity's sake, for tutorials, it's good to be able to turn on and off these path generators so I can just focus on one. But in real life, you might want paths from uh, the generator and from lights and from mask all at the same time. They're not mutually exclusive, so you can use paths from all these different sources all at the same time, which is kind of fun. Now, I want to close up my path generator, open up paths from masks, and we can add taper size here. We can adjust the uh, end path. Make this beautiful thing here. Do the same stuff we saw with the path generator. We can repeat n-gons. We can you know, take those down so there's not as many. And we can adjust the scale, maybe the x scale. We can twist this. Anything that we've done with previous geometry on previous paths, we can do with these masks, which gives us so much power because there's so much you could do with masks and After Effects. So for example, I have this text layer here. Text is fun, it's brilliant and original <laughs> on my part. I'm gonna go to the layer menu and I'm gonna choose create masks from text. That will create masks from this text as advertised. <laughs> I'll select these uh, masks, command A or control A to select all of them, control C or command C to copy them. Then I'm gonna go back to my DAO layer, turn off the text layer and hit command or control V to paste. And I'll go ahead and turn off 
tapering here and actually I'll go ahead and delete my original mask. And so now we have a bunch of zany settings here, but what I can do is actually just reset this, turn off the path generator again, and now we have our text here. I can go into our segment section, maybe bring these segments up, take the size down. Now I have this 3D geometry around my text. Now I'm just gonna undo this a little bit to get back to my, my prettier settings. And I'm gonna go ahead and press M for all the masks. And I'm going to hit Control or Command A and then delete to get rid of those. Now, since we're talking about paths, I mean, we've gotta talk about Adobe Illustrator, right? It's like the king of all paths. So I'm gonna go over to here to the line segment tool. And if I hold my mouse down underneath that is the spiral tool. So I can click and drag and make a spiral. And then I can select the selection tool to actually select the whole thing. And then I could hit Command or Control C again, go back to After Effects, select my Dow layer, and then paste it in. And then now I have this beautiful spiral shape to play with. But wait, there's more. I'm gonna show you one final example, one little cool tip and trick here. I already have a Dow light set up, but I haven't animated it, so there's no motion path here. So what I can actually do is go to the position property of a light and select the position property. So not the light, but the actual position property of the light, hit Commander Control V to paste this spiral that's already in my clipboard. And now we have this awesome 3D spiral here. I go back to Dow, pass from Dow lights, change Dow lights mode from entire path to build up. And now we have instant animation. If we wanted to take this even further, we can create another null, make it 3D, parent the light to it as we did before, and then what I'm gonna do is set in a keyframe for the position property. Drag that to the beginning there. And then offset this in Z over the course of the animation. Oh, and then watch, I play this back and we now have a 3D corkscrew animation. I have my camera tool here or camera and I'm gonna rotate this around. And I got a lot going on here. So this is going unusually slow, but you could see that we have this 3D corkscrew. Ah, oh, gotta love it. Now you can tell by just this little intro how amazing Dow is, but folks, we're just getting warmed up here. I mean, you got to check out the next tutorial in this series where we're going to be looking at how to repeat, deform, offset this geometry, and all that stuff takes this to a whole nother level. And remember, as always, to refer to the Dow documentation for complete coverage of all Dow's features. And that does it for this one, folks. Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. On behalf of Red Giant, I'm Chad Perkins. Take care.